Good morning and welcome to an introduction to risk management. My name is John Albers and this is my instruction project for uh, the UAF Summer Term English 314. Day to day we are faced with hazards. Uh, hazards could come in the form of environmental conditions, the weather, the temperature, physical conditions we find ourselves surrounded by. They could come in the form of personal interactions. Could be people, animals, um, other bodies that we come in uh, contact with in our day-to-day -day world, or unforeseen circumstances, things we wouldn't necessarily anticipate to happen, but could reasonably be anticipated to happen. Accidents, crime, depending on the scenario, depending on the situation in which we find ourselves. With these hazards in mind, keeping in mind uh, the, the fact that we're surrounded by them day-to-day uh, -day could lead to a worry-ward kind of state. Uh, what if can be certainly become a consuming state of mind. No need to worry, uh, we can do a little bit of planning and this is where risk management comes into play for us. Basically risk management is a process. Uh, it's a step-by-step -step process as we'll see here momentarily of identifying hazards and controlling risks. The purpose is to mitigate recognized threats before they can do us harm with the aim of to avoid personal injury, damages, lost time, and lost money. Guidance can come in the form of many different things. Personal decisions in our day-to-day -day lives uh, usually, well, oftentimes require risk management uh, procedures, whether we think about them consciously or not. It's an act of making informed, responsible decisions. Guidance may come in the form of regulatory bodies. Uh, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration is one such uh, organization that requires many times uh, risk management practices to be in place for certain industries. You have the Joint Commission, JCO, listed there. They require risk management processes specific for hospital environments and the Committee for the Accreditation of Rehabilitation Facilities, also a healthcare body, uh, though geared towards behavioral health sort of uh, settings. Internally, there may be business policies and procedures as well that you need to be aware of as a supervisor sometimes uh, regarding uh, risk management for a specific business. Regardless of the guidance, uh, they're all there to promote safety and health for employees and for clients. Some important terms to understand when we're considering risk management. Hazards are conditions generally recognized, uh, the sources of potential danger. Uh, to illustrate, we have gasoline and flames. Separately, generally safe, put them together, we have a hazardous condition. A snowstorm outside and you inside, again, safe situation separately throwing you out into the snowstorm, there's a hazardous condition. Risks are the effects of the condition. They generally haven't occurred. We're wanting to plan ahead, of course, uh, but they could reasonably ant be anticipated to happen. Uh, based on our previous examples, uh, if we have gasoline near a flame, it could result in a fire, resulting further in a loss of life or property. Uh, we put you out in the snowstorm, we could have a loss of life due to exposure. Mitigation is the act of making a danger less severe. Uh, we want to address our hazards, we want to address our risks, we want to try and make the conditions safer than what they actually are. Uh, to do this, we introduce controls. Uh, from our previous examples, uh, to control a fire, we could introduce uh, mechanical barriers, a fire locker to keep the gasoline in, to keep it away from the open flames. We could introduce work practice controls, actually having somebody there to observe the uh, combustibles to make sure that uh, nothing untoward happens. We could have them wear personal protective equipment, fire retardant clothing to protect them directly from a uh, potential flame. Regardless of the mitigation, regardless of the controls, we need to have supervision. Somebody needs to actively be watching or directing what's going on uh, under these conditions. It's a responsibility. It should be assigned. Examples, making sure the fire locker is used, making sure the observer is observing, making sure the PPE is used appropriately. Understanding these terms, uh, here's the five-step risk management process, generally uh, accepted uh, uh, in the risk management uh, world. Identifying your hazards, of course, uh, get a list of those, take a look at them, uh, come up with your list of risks. Again, reasonably anticipated risks, results from the, uh, the hazards. Uh, we want to devise means of mitigation. We want to come up with uh, controls to uh, control the hazards and the risks. Implement the controls, of course, uh, and we want to supervise. To 
illustrate the risk management process, let's take a look at uh, a road trip. Pretty basic uh, sort of activity most of us uh, are involved with. Kind of gives you an idea of how you would apply risk management in a day-to-day -day sort of setting. Step one, we want to identify our hazards. A few things that come to mind, potential dangers, uh, potential of nasty weather, poor vehicle maintenance, no emergency equipment, and inexperienced driver. Risks associated with these potential dangers, the effects of the dangers, heavy rain could result in a washed out road and delays, poor maintenance could result in a vehicle breakdown, being stranded out on the road somewhere, no equipment, uh, you're stranded, now you're cold, you're hungry, you're unable to uh, fix the vehicle and move along your way, and being inexperienced, you might have equipment available, but you're unable to use it because you just don't know how to. Mitigating steps, and this is as easy as it goes, in addressing the weather, check the forecast, call the weather service. If your vehicle needs maintenance, get it in and have maintenance, have it serviced. No emergency equipment, pack an emergency kit, if you're inexperienced, get familiar with the vehicle and your emergency equipment. Ultimately, if you can't mitigate away the danger, you may have to cancel the trip. Uh, this is the ultimate uh, mitigating step. Uh, let's just go ahead and uh, change the plan. Sometimes this is what's necessary. Step four and five is implement your controls and supervise. I say implement controls and uh, have to make a point, it does no good to develop a plan and not use it. We see this oftentimes with, uh, in planning, uh, we put a plan on paper, the paper goes on the shelf and we go and do something completely different. Supervision for a personal trip may just be individual accountability. On a business trip, uh, it's likely to be supervised by someone else requiring documentation that all these steps have taken place. Um, and additional measures uh, to make sure that the uh, the driver uh, is safe. Whatever the case, it's helpful to write things down. There may be standardized forms that you need to use uh, in your risk management process. Uh, here's an example of an Army risk management form. Or you might just make a simple list as uh, illustrated here. Hazards, risks, controls, all a nice little grid. Uh, helps us go back and ref uh, refer to what steps it is we've taken to uh, protect ourselves. In conclusion, risk management is certainly not a complicated thing. Uh, it's an investment in peace of mind. It's very much time well spent. It's an investment in your personal safety, leading to an avoidance of personal injury, and a protection of valuable assets. Thank you for your time, and good luck. Some work cited if you're interested in further information. Uh, some Army stuff out there, yes. Uh, occupational safety and health is a good place to go as well. Uh, and uh, the Federal Emergency Management Agency has a whole list of uh, resources related to uh, risk management. Thank you.